Hey guys, <laughs> hey everyone, welcome. Welcome back to another session of the Moving Market series where you look at some of the biggest moves in the Singapore and Hong Kong market. Um, proudly, proudly brought to you by Societe General and Investing Note, right? So in this exclusive series, you know, we will we will not only look at some of the market forecasts for the week ahead, but also you know, get to know some of uh, Singapore's notable traders, you know, their story. And of course, they are, um, very importantly, their approach to trading. So I'm your host, Desmond Leong, and today with me, right, joining us later because she has some technical issues. You know, we have one of the most popular traders on Investing Note, uh, Lin Lin, uh, as most of you know her, Lin Lin, right? Uh, so she, she'll be singing by in the next few minutes. All right. So anyway, uh, since this is brought to you uh, in joint collaboration with um, SockGen and Investing Note, we do need to cover some uh, disclaimers first. Right, um, Ethan, you don't mind me uh, sharing my screen? Give you a second. <laughs> All right. Uh, I try. Uh, I was, I'm telling. Uh, can you guys see my screen? If 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 you guys are able to see my screen here. All right. There we go. Okay. So anyway, I'm just going to touch on it really quickly right uh just four pages of disclaimers but I, I, I will just summarize it right because basically nothing herein should be considered as investment or financial advice or any form of recommendation to purchase or sell the dlcs uh or other securities mentioned right any past performance of dlcs or of the underlying assets is not indicative of future performance okay investing in dlcs or other securities carry risks you know, so please see the issuers website for further information and relevant risk. And lastly, of course, the DLCs are for specified investment product, qualified investors only. Okay, so anyway, in today's session, right, guys, what I want to share with you is, um, so every week, not every fortnight, right? <laughs> every fortnight, uh, we, we will, before I interview some of the um, some of the guests that we have on the show, what we like to do is like to stick our neck out, right? Make some calls on the markets, right? Hopefully they work out well, I think. Um, last month, last month we caught the bounce on DBS, which worked really well. I'm just gonna pull up my charts over here and show you guys. Uh, last month we caught the bounce on DBS, uh, worked out pretty well, and we caught the drop on Tencent, which has also worked out pretty well. In most recent month, um, I would say things were moving slightly slower, right? Um, uh, slightly slower. We had the call, um, we had the call for the drop on um, for the drop. Uh, no, for Alibaba to stay within the channel. Right, so it's um, hovering around the 108.45 area, right? Because we identified a nice channel, so you know we we're not seeing prices to like break out pretty strongly, but we were expecting it to kind of rise a bit to test the channel, right? Since then, right? Since then, at least what we can see is that <clears throat> Alibaba has continued to rise, respected the channel, and hovered around this level, right? So you know how to play the move, right? It, it, it would have been a pretty decent setup. Right. The other the other move that we had was actually on the Gili bounce, right? So Gili was testing a super duper nice level at a ten point two zero level. So we're kind of expecting it to go to fourteen point two three. That's a forty percent bounce, quite a bit, right? quite a bit. But um, I don't think it managed to reach there exactly, right? It did do a little bit of a bounce, right? So we caught the bounce from here. It has risen quite a bit, right? Hasn't really reached its full potential. I right, haven't re really reached its full potential, but we do expect it to rise just that little bit more, you know, to reach um to reach the fourteen point three four level minimally. All right. So these were the few moves. Right. So so far, I'd say that we have a pretty decent, um, <laughs> pretty decent hit rate. Right. Today, I'm going to share with you a few more of uh, the moves that we're looking at. But for those of you guys who are wondering, um, right, uh, my name is Desmond Leong. Right. I, I run an Everest uh, Everest Fortune Group. It's a award-winning research firm. Right, specializing FX equities, uh, indices, commodities, and a little bit of crypto. Right, so we actually um, heavily, heavily focus on technicals to forecast on where the markets are heading. Right, so a lot of this, I'll leave you guys to do your own fundamentals. You know, to, to dig a little bit into your fundamentals and 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 see whether it aligns with your views. Right, but the the kind of calls that I'm looking at is very, very focused on technicals. Okay, I want to share with you some of. Um, some of the moves which I think are, you know, we should definitely keep an eye out over the next uh, over the next few days. Okay, now just give me a second. Uh, just give me a second. All right. So now 
one of the big moves that we're looking at, by the way, by the way, if you have, um, okay, just give me a second. Try to click on full screen. Um, I think it's full screen already. I, I should be full screen, All right? Um, about some of the moves that, um, some of the moves that we are, uh, sorry, I just lost my train of thought. So uh, yeah, so, so some of the moves that I'm looking at, one of the big moves is definitely HSI, okay, the Hang Seng Index. I'm going to share with you why, all right? So we're looking at Hang Seng Index, right? And we, we do see, right? I'm just going to show you a blank chart over here. And I'm going to show you how I, how I um, how I break stuff down, okay? So you can see that there, there has been a little bit of bounce over here. A lot of people are thinking that this could be the start of a nice little recovery, right? But what, you know, sometimes you're looking at the four-hour charts, you know, you just look at this and you think it's a nice little recovery they're expecting here. But what I like to do is always kind of take a top-down approach, right? Go from the weekly, go to a daily chart, right? And in this case, we're looking at a daily chart. And one definite big level for us to look out for is over here, okay? There's a nice big resistance level over here. Why is it a nice big resistance level? It's because price previously bounced from it, right? Um, slightly above here, right? It bounced from it, bounced from it, right? And the moment it broke, right, it has dropped like a rock. Okay, so the psychology of traders, right? If you're looking at the psychology of traders, whole bunch of traders, <clears throat> all right, whole bunch of traders, right? They were sh they were thinking that price was going to bounce from here, okay? It did not bounce, and they're holding onto their sh uh, long positions and is riding riding the move all the way down, you know, to 1800 level, right? Now, when price um start to reverse up here, right? When price start to reverse here, what's likely going to happen is that uh, people are likely going to close off their positions. Right, they're gonna get out of the positions. They've been for a while, right, going all the way down. But that is just mainly looking at the psychology of this setup. So I'm just looking at this over here, and then once I establish this, the next thing I do is I see if there are any other, um, any other. You, you don't just trade just based on one kind of single level, all right. You kind of need to add things up to see if there's, you know, there's a big, um, if different studies, um, support your support your analysis, right. Just looking at Hang Seng Index itself, right. I do notice. Um, not the best, not the best, really. It's not the best trend line, right? But there is, a, you know, it is definitely making lower highs, right? It's making lower highs, lower highs. You know, if you want to, um, if you want to tweak it a bit, you know, you could you could say that it's a little bit of a trend line uh, resistance over here, right? But importantly, you know, it's, it's dropping, it's dropping, you know, it's dropping, it's dropping, and it looks like it's going to continue dropping. But there is that little bit of bearish momentum, okay? But what I like to do more is I like to draw... Um, you know, Fibonacci, some people call it chaos theory, right? But yeah, I like to do that little bit of Fibonacci and see, okay, I got 38% over here, okay? I got a nice, probably a 61.8, just about there. So I'm just going to highlight a couple of levels and show you what I mean, all right? So I got a 61.8 over here. Uh, and those of you guys who know I use Fibonacci, all right? <laughs> I'm a big fan of it, right? But I, I tend to like to call the... Uh, the, the key levels of reversals, all right? I'm a contrarian style trader, okay? Uh, we've got these two big moves over here, and I think this by itself should be enough, right? This by itself enough. And if you drop the Ichimoku cloud, you know, you can see price is kind of, um, it, it's going to take a bit for price to cross above this Ichimoku, all right? So we got three levels here. We got 38%, the 61, and the over, and the, and this nice big resistance, okay? I'm going to highlight this area, right? Because when we're trading, it's usually nicer to look uh, add it in the form of areas. So a nice big area over here. I'm going to put it in red just to let you guys know. A bearish area. So we expect prices, right? We expect prices to kind of test this area a bit. Okay. Expect prices to test this area a bit and then maybe reverse from here. Okay. How low can it go? Right. Um, if if you want to try, you, you could try to play the gap, you know, cover the gap over here. <laughs> if you're feeling adventurous, right? You can try to play the gap all the way down there. And otherwise, you know, you can, uh, you could, you could just play it, um, probably to the 20, uh, 21, 21,000 area about here. Should be enough to play a short-term reversal. I'm not a big fan of calling the mega move all the way down, right? But whenever you see a resistance, right, it tends to drop, right, and it tends to drop. You know, the the closer it is, the more in control you are. Okay, so this is the first big move, right? I always like to pull up this thing, right? Um, if you, <clears throat> and I do recommend, right? If you, if you do. Have it. I'm going to zoom in a bit. Go to dlc.sockgen.com. dlc.sockgen.com. Right. You get tongue tied there. Right. Go, go to dlc.sockgen.com. Right. Um, okay. Um, 
Okay, yeah, uh, go to dlc.sockgen.com, right? And, and what you want to do is you want to go to search, right? Over here, um, you know, the Hang Seng Index, right? Hey, HSI, sorry. Yeah, Hang Seng Index is the one you look at. If you want to go short, right? This is the, this is the you know, try to look for the one that's a little star beside it, right? So, yeah, this is the one you're going to look for, right? And um, if you're thinking of shorting in this case, right, you want to buy, you want to buy the seven times short. It's a seven times short. So, if it drops, yeah, drops one percent is equivalent to dropping seven percent. So it can be, uh, you know, it's high risk, right? So please exercise due uh, due diligence uh, before you you take this trade, right? And the and the next one, right? Next one that I want to look at, right, is the um, is Comfort Delgro, right? They're gonna hate me for this, <laughs> but but Comfort Delgro, okay. I know it kind of looks a little bit um, it looks looks a little bit choppy. Not I'm not too big a fan of. Oops, you yeah, click on something. All right, I'm not too big a fan of this, but I'm gonna I'm gonna stick my neck out and call for uh, call a move here. Okay. What I do notice, what I do notice is that um, there is a pretty nice resistance level over here. Why is it a nice resistance? I'm gonna touch on it really closely. All right. Nice reaction, nice bounce, nice bounce, right? Nice reaction. There's a nice little bit of reaction happening there. So it's clearly an area of interest. We call it in um we call it overlap resistance. Right, but some other reasons why I actually think it's pretty nice, right? Is that firstly, there's this nice little bit of um, not the best, but this nice channel, bearish channel. Price is testing that bearish channel, is testing the overlap. You're looking at a little bit of price action over here. The levels are looking pretty nice, right? If you throw on the um, 200 moving average, you can see um, each time price kind of tests the 200 moving average, there is some sort of a reaction. There is some sort of a reaction. Right now, it's testing that 200 moving average, which is a big level, right? So we are looking at a couple of reasons here why I believe um, it can be a pretty decent risk reward kind of setup, right? You can keep your risk really tight, right? But from here, you know, you can minimally try to play the move down, right? Not too far, right? Probably to this overlap support area over here, right? Just going to put this in green. But, yeah, but you, we, we could ideally see this move down to here um, for Comfort Delgro, okay? Right. Okay. So yeah, this is one of the next key moves that we are looking at for um, Comfort Delgro. Right. If you if you want to find it on um, the equivalent stock gen, uh, equivalent DLC, right, and you can't find it here, you just need to type in Comfort Delgro. There we go. Right. So we got the five times short and we got a five times long. You don't go to five times short. Click on it. Oh, <laughs> looks like some people already are getting in onto it. Yeah, you can actually buy the five times short. So if there's a drop, you know, there's a drop from one point five one to one point. For three, right? You know the, the the returns are essentially multiplied by five times, uh, roughly. All right. So these are big two moves that we're looking at. One is the HSI Hang Seng Index reversal below the twenty three thousand area, right? And another one is the um the the other one is Comfort Delgro, right? Reversal below the one point five one area. I think out of all the calls I'm making, I think majority of them are shorts, right? Because the, the behavior of the psychology of drops is a li little bit different from longs. Right, but this is definitely something that we will be looking at. Now, I've covered enough, right? I've covered enough on the, the key setups that we can be expecting for the next um, two weeks until we meet again, right? And what I'd like to do now is actually invite Lin Lin and Ethan um, to uh, to share their view, right? Their approaches to trading, they are... Oh, there, there you are, Lin Lin. Oh, that's a nice shirt. Hello. Nice shirt, right? Lin Lin, it's great to see you. I'm glad you managed to uh, sort out the technical difficulties and stuff, right? Yeah. Uh, and and uh, what I'd like to um to take this opportunity to do is to uh, let you introduce you know you, you are a popular person on investing not rather one a very very outspoken person sharing a lot a lot of uh, a lot of your views on the market which is great right um and what I'd like to do is to um let people know a little bit about your backstory you know how how do you get started in trading right a little bit about yourself as a person right Linin uh I I'm just a trader. I'm a trader and I, I use charts for uh, all my entry and exit. And uh, actually, I'm running a trading club uh, for investing note. Uh, my trading club already about four years old. And uh, I pick up uh, trading, I pick up stock is because of uh, influence from my uh, family. Yeah, oh. both my, my dad and my mom, uh, they are very actively in uh, stock. So uh, since very young, uh, I have been following them. Yeah. So okay. uh, my my best my best teacher is my uncle, and uh, he has passed away already. So uh, 
I learned a lot of things from him. And the thing I cannot forget when he told me, when I started to understand what is stock trading, he keep telling me, human being has a vital signs. Vital sign meaning uh, those signs telling us uh, what is our status. So same thing for stock market. He keep telling me. I, I, at first, I couldn't understand. So like human being, we have uh, the six uh, vital sign. And for stock market, after uh, a while, I actually uh, trade and uh, I pick up and I learn. I noticed it's true. There are few signs in the market which can help us to trade better. So I will be sharing one of the whiter sign, and I want you to remember this. This is the whiter sign, which is very, very important, which uh, I have been using it throughout, and it helped me a lot. Oil. I, I like oil a lot. Why? Because this is one of the very important uh, whiter sign. Okay, two things affecting oil, demand supply and geopolitical tension. So if in this world, we, we don't have oil. How the economy going to run? You, you must agree, correct? We need energy to move. Same thing, that's why oil is important. So when you see the demand and supply change, it tells you something. That is where it shows us the sign, okay? So influence of uh, geopolitical actually has great impact on demand and supply as well, and directly to the price of the oil. Okay, so I'm sure you all uh, heard, uh, I post many times, uh, I predicted uh, this uh, COVID-19 crisis and I predicted oil price as well. So, oh, yeah. Uh, I mean, yeah, everyone remembers yeah, yeah. that. Yeah. <laughs> and, and, and before I continue, uh, I wanted to thank Desmond first. Oh, really? Your, <laughs> your, call, your call on Gili and your call on Baba, excellent. I, I just oh, took my profit you. this morning. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So the, the call was excellent. Yeah. So I, I mean, want to continue with my oil, my oil story. So Ethan, can I have the slide? Thank you. <laughs> Actually, uh, my side here, I face some uh, some technical error. This okay. This is the disclaimer. Uh, this is my live commentary, which I want you to take note, and you must remember these two things. Uh? demand and supply and also geopolitical tension and okay. be, before i continue with all this actually uh i i sent out my, uh, a few reading material to, uh for you to read throughout this presentation especially one of the formation uh, i like best uh, this is the very important formation trust me because i've been using it and i've been teaching my my student how powerful is this formation i will share this powerful formation with you and i hope you see how we apply this okay, okay. so i would like to introduce these two things now which is how i predicted covid 19 which is in earlier 2020 and the geopolitical tension uh, the war between russia and ukraine which i predicted oil price to hit 100 and looking forward to 200 as well Next. It then, so broadening formation. This is one of the formation which is very powerful. You must know. Okay, so I give you the formation and there's a description. And now I'm sharing with you the application. So you take a look of this slide. Huh? Number one thing I want you to think note is pay attention to the title is a crude oil and the date. This is the date where I started to see, because oil is a vital sign to me. So I always refer back to all this uh, chart when I wanted to see how the market is performing and what is the health status of the market. So as you can see, we have these two big events, uh, 208 financial crisis, and we have oil crisis. And I predicted another crisis, which is I see this chart on this day, I noticed the resistance there telling me a crisis is coming. So, and this is SDI index. Uh, if you take a look of just now the, the prediction of coming crisis, which exactly fall on 2018. 
And from here, actually, it, it started to trend down already. 2019 and 2020. So in 2020, you can see actually all our SDI also losing strength and uh, heading down. And I actually shared this chart on 7th of February 2020, whereby I confirmed Wuhan virus is our is the crisis and it will definitely crash the market. And I presented this to all my students during our meeting and TA class. We get ourselves ready to see a big crisis coming, which actually sparked a very heavy selling. True enough, 2020, we see this crisis, which is a coronavirus across the world and we locked down that this little tiny virus locked down the whole world and this is really a big crisis which i see from oil chart okay yeah so now i wanted to share with you the powerful of broadening top uh, this formation which can which actually helped me to predict to predict to predict the the, the war and the oil price so i continue to um watch this uh, oil because this one is a vital sign for me and last year march and i came up with this because the the formation here tells me something very very interesting as you can see it pointing up towards 100 after it hit a support below uh, and then it just bounced nicely and as i mentioned to you earlier oil need has two very important factor geopolitical tension and supply and demand we know during covid 19 lockdown oil actually facing a lot a lot a lot of no demand why because the whole world is locked down right that mm -hmm. that is why right. there's no demand oil price slump okay down all the way until it hit a support it started to bounce and the second factor i want you to remember just now is geopolitical tension and at that time when when the oil making nicely rebound from there last year, I was wondering, oh no, it's nothing to do with demand and supply this time. So it is, must be a geopolitical tension. I predicted a war. I predicted a war at that time uh, on March 2021. I was telling my student there will be a war. But that time I was thinking the war should be in some way at Middle East. So uh, as we, I continue to track, yeah, we can see last year, the geopolitical tension actually it is not in the Middle East, but it's between U Ukraine and Russia. When come closer to the end of 2021, we can see it much, much more clearer. And I can confirm that my prediction is correct. And as you can see, this is the formation which I wanted to show you. Okay, resistant R1, when oil price hit that resistance, that is where the financial crisis. Resistant R2, that is where the oil crisis. And we have resistant R3. We see another crisis, which is a COVID-19, and it went down to the support and it made a very nice rebound and it bound nicely. The minute, the minute it break up the microphone resistance, and that's where we can see it heading towards 100. And it actually hit 100, and that's where the war actually started, the Ukraine war. And my two predictions actually uh, came nicely with tracking on crude oil. So crude oil is very important, and I have proved it to you already by continuously watching this crude. You, you can get a lot of uh, idea, and also you know what is going on to the market. So right now we can see crude actually has already break up. Very mm. bullish. Yeah, very bullish. Yeah. 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 So it's a good call that you made. Right? I was looking at the investing note, right? Uh the, the stuff that you're posting. I think uh, this has to be one of your best calls, right? Uh, the drop on the the the, the 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 crude oil skyrocketing quite well. <laughs> okay, so uh Ethan, there's one more slide. Okay, so this is the slide I want you to take note because I made a very bold projection uh, before the war started in uh, February. Yeah, so I, I said oil going towards 200 and actually uh, the, the megaphone also pointing towards that. 
Yeah, we, we can see we are now in this uh, Russia war and we can see the oil actually actually uh, quite uh, bullish at this moment due to the uh, Russia. Yeah, so so will we see a 200 or not? Uh, it is very interesting. That is my prediction uh, for oil price, uh, which is come next. Yeah, so it already break out nicely uh, 100. And now because of uh, Joe Biden uh, released the reserve oil, yeah? yeah, Joe Biden released reserve oil, so oil under some pressure. Yes, I see. Um, Lin, so would you, um, would you have any like uh, particular stocks that you're looking at, uh, uh, especially in the Singapore Hong Kong space, um, that you might want to uh, take advantage of this um, insights that you have? Maybe any oil related counters? Yeah, I love oil, and then uh, Sinop is one of uh, our core. Okay, uh yeah. petrol china yeah petrol china, china too, is it? okay okay yes yes okay so in, in, in order for you to know how uh hang Seng, sdi you you must not forget china correct yeah mm -hmm. you must know a bit of china and if, if you take a look of china you you must know actually china has a lot of similarity to our singapore why because China, if you remember, during the Deng Xiaoping time, Deng Xiaoping came, visited us uh, in 1978, which he very impressed with uh, Mr. Lee Kuan Yew, how he bring Singapore to uh, such a great development. So you can see these two, and you can see Shanghai Index. Why? Because Shanghai Index and many companies listed in Hong Kong actually based in China. Agree? Mm -hmm. Correct. Yeah. 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 So what, what happened right now after CG being took over and you can see a lot of uh tech crack down, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So and I I I I'm not sure whether you noticed this or not. Huh? Since 2021, since 2021, when Hang Seng Index hit the peak, that, that is where the crackdown started, that is where SDI continued to rally. Okay, yeah. Okay. It, SDI continue to rally. So you can see the selling over at Hang Seng, but the buying up is over at our STI. Mm. It's a kind of a seesaw. And now, and now you can see a Hang Seng index kind of like found a support immediately after Xi Jinping said he's not going to crack the tech anymore. Yes, so the support can see from there. But I, I will still see uh, some pressure over here because of US. Okay. Many many of these tech stock actually also listed in the US, based on the geopolitical tension with Russia, because China is uh, supporting Russia, so US kind of like uh, wanted to uh, give some sanction to China, which I I don't think so lah, huh? Because mm -hmm. uh, China is uh, quite uh, powerful, so nothing they can do. They will continue to squeeze some of the. The, the China Chinese listed stock in US. Okay. Yeah. So if you got to ask me at this junction, uh, is that good to buy tech stock uh, in Hong Kong side? I would say I will swing. It would just like when you uh, suggest Gili, Tencent, Baba, Meituan. I like Meituan a lot. I'm actually quite bullish on Meituan. Uh, I long Meituan last, last week or so. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I like Meituan. I like Meituan. Like yeah. I like Meituan and I like uh, Wusi Biotech. Yeah. Okay, Wusi Biotech. Uh. Yes. Are you yes. are you long or short on Wusi? Long. Oh, long. How what yes. your uh how long term? Short term or long term? Uh short term. Oh, short my, term. Uh. My my suggestion until this time be be swing is better. It is not so advisable for us to buy and hold because there are so many uncertainties uh, uh, in the market. Okay, one, one hand, Russia say it's ceasefire, another day, he's going to start again, correct? Uh, true. So, yeah. how, how, how can this going to continue? We do not know, right? Correct okay. and, and we So have, your view on Hang Seng is, uh, based on this chart, you're, you're, you're forecasting it to continue to rise? Okay, uh, for one not? Uh, Ethan, there's one more slide after this time. Ah, okay. So you can see the blue color is a support. Uh. 
So this is one, a one month chart, right? I think like each bar is one month, right? Yes. So mm. Hang Seng Index found support. That's where uh, she made a very strong uh, relief rally. Uh. Everyone so relieved because Xi Jinping said he is not going to crack the tech anymore. Mm, you see right. or not? Since then, uh, we can see uh, the support was quite uh, strong. But if you look at the mega formation, uh, you can see the support still got uh, one more leg. That, that's where it's the, inch down the, a little bit more, isn't it? Yes. That's where uh, I'm very cautious on this point. I'm very cautious, not 100%, but I'm I, I cautiously optimistic on this. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, cautious. I'm cautious. Yeah, I'm quite okay. cautious like this. So, and as we all know, uh, uh, World Cup, right? 2022 World Cup, Qatar, yeah. correct? Yeah, yeah so I, I quite like things related to sport. Yeah, so that's okay. why I like, I like leaning. You like which one? Leaning. Leaning. Leaning, leaning the, the spot. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, Le yeah. Um, yeah. Are you going to show it in, the, in your next slide? Is it on your next slide? Uh, no. I, oh, this, okay. is some, this is some of the stock uh, uh, so I would yeah. say I, I like throughout. Because okay. leaning is it, not a tech stock. And uh, we have this uh, ma uh, major event, the tournament. Uh, World Cup is coming. Uh, okay. in, in Qatar, which is somewhere around November, yeah. Mm. So, uh, I would, I would, I would, I would pay some attention to to this some of this stock, yeah. Leaning, I'm leaning. Let's check it out. Okay, okay. You can That's check. Nice. You can see, yeah. Oh yeah. Um. So, okay, okay. We we'll, we we'll take a look at leaning later, maybe. Um. But I think you 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 also have a couple more that you want to look at, right? Yeah. But. Back to Singapore, back to Singapore. Actually, in Singapore, as I mentioned to you, I, I like oil. Okay. I like oil. So, in Singapore, oil related, we have Capricorp. Capricorp. But Capricorp, Capricorp actually, Capricorp actually uh, uh, because of Sam Corp Marina, so you can see Capricorp actually is right now uh, waiting for the announcement. Uh. Yeah, so pending for announcement. I think they need to make some announcement very soon. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Some restructuring uh, taking place. Uh, in uh, bit, the market need to make some announcement. That's fine. Yeah. Okay. So um, I like SIA. I like SIA. SIA. <laughs> I like SIA. Yeah. Okay. And my best, my best love is Singtel. Oh, Singtel. Uh, okay. Yes. Yes. I I love I like Singtel <laughs> since, since 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 last year. I really like Singtel a lot. Yeah, so I can see. Singtel? I think you're you're slightly bullish on Singtel, is it? Uh, I'm quite bullish on Singtel. Yes, I'm very bullish on Singtel. Yes. Okay. Uh, because of the defensive nature, because yeah, of the right, defensive right. nature, yeah, and also uh, hoping something from uh the digital license, the bank digital license uh with a uh, grab, uh, we are not sure uh how would it uh going to uh, benefit the 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 shareholder uh the the stock. Or okay. are they going to have some plan uh, in the future? Yeah, okay. So yeah, they are, these are the few things which uh, I, I like uh, on uh, for Singtel. Yes, Singtel. Yeah, I can okay. see Singtel from a technical level. It, it broke the 2.6 uh, old resistance level. So it actually looks quite quite bullish. It looks quite Sing bullish. I like your call on Singtel, yeah. And uh, because of the easing of COVID, yeah, and uh, we can see the borders start to open already, right? Yeah, correct. I, I quite like Genting Singapore as well. Oh, Genting. Okay. <laughs> yeah, everyone go back there. <laughs> yeah, Genting Singapore. Because with all this easing, when we see more, more, more visitors coming in, and we can see people coming in for leisure, visiting, okay. then, yeah. So, Gen Genting is something uh, is, is uh, short term, uh, short term to me. Uh. Short yeah, term. Short term. Okay, yeah, but Singtel, I would, I would say, I like it for long term, uh. Yeah, but this what, one you need, you need patience, uh, for Singtel. Yes. Uh, what is your reason why you like Singtel? Singtel, defensive in nature, number one. Okay. Uh, Baki India actually now start to show some good sign already. Yeah. So and also I can see uh the digital license, uh, you know the bank digital license. Correct, yeah. Right, yeah. yeah, this is something I, I really looking forward to, but yet they haven't announced anything for, for this part. La. So okay. I'm waiting, yeah, I'm waiting for this. I, I'm sure the management will definitely make use of their license. Yeah, 
it, it's just a, a matter of time as how uh, they are going to plan for this part. Yeah. Okay, so that is slightly longer term. The, the shorter term setup they're looking at is more Genting. Uh, Genting, yes. Genting Singapore. Yeah. Genting so Singapore. again, again, all this is uh, very, uh, has very close uh, relation with the, the, the development of uh, COVID-19. Uh, as we, we know that, uh, you see, I'm still wearing my mask here because <laughs> uh, I have to put on my mask because the NTU are uh, still uh, asking us uh, we have to be very cautious. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so Okay, okay. That's that's, that's nice. Yeah, Genting Singapore does look like uh on short term it could rise. Uh, it's Genting Singapore, I think there's um there's a DLC for Genting Singapore also. The fight um five times long, is it? If I remember yes. correctly. Yes, yes. Okay, yes. Worth, worth looking at. Okay. Yes. Okay. Some interesting yeah. Yeah. yeah, so I, 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 quite did, I quite like this feel. Uh. Then uh, so I mentioned to you just now for uh, Hong Kong side, uh, C, all related is Metro China and uh, CNO, CNOOC. I, and I, I think uh, we, we, see, we see these two quite, uh, it up quite a lot already and actually can uh, follow closely to, to uh, oil price. And okay. as we all know, earnings season is coming on. Uh, earnings season is coming. I yeah. am very sure oil related stock, uh, oil related stock definitely will give you a very nice earning result. Okay. Yeah, the result will be as compared to the rest. I think this is uh, partly because of oil price is uh, quite quite nicely uh, trending up. Yeah, bullish on oil and oil, oil related uh, stock uh, may, may give us some sweet surprise uh, when they make the announcement on their earnings. Yeah. So, so you believe that 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 little bit of earning can actually give people uh it might it might uh it might be quite a bullish uh, people might react quite bullishly uh when the earnings report come out. Yeah, yeah. Because uh, earnings season is coming. And and I wanted to uh remind everyone tomorrow is fifth of April, Hong Kong market uh is a public holiday. Tomorrow okay. Tomorrow, Hong, uh, Hong Kong is public holiday. Eh? So if you are trading Hong Kong, uh, you may want to take note. Yeah, and then I think my, many of my students is watching. Please mark your calendar. Yeah, so. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's quite interesting. Um, Ethan, I'm not sure if you can, you can share my screen. I'm just looking at the scene which, um, which um, Lin Lin shared. Are you able to share my screen? Yeah, so yeah, just looking at this, right? And I can see that it has broken, you know, you can see that oh, we're on the weekly chart, right? You know, one yes. reaction, two reaction, three reaction, four reaction, and it finally kind of just broke out of this uh, yes. long-term descending resistance line, right? Yes. And a very nice, uh, what was previously a very nice support level over here that stretches all the way back to 2016, right? Right, it has yes. broken yes. this key level. So it could be, we, we, could, we could actually see a pretty nice, uh, move up on here actually it's a pretty interesting call you made uh lin lin right because if, if it really breaks out all, all this right this level this descending resistance line this overlap right we can actually see it bounce up quite nicely yeah we, we like this we like this since since uh january yeah okay i just need to see what's the dlc equivalent for it right see no um just let me find it right uh search Azure A three. Oh, okay, they have the long and the short. Okay. The long, the long, the long is quite. I just go in this on myself. Huh? <laughs> really, yeah. Really. Yeah. Actually, actually, <laughs> I I traded, I traded your Gili also. I seen a few times already. The okay. the day the day after your your call last, I think the previous one with Dan. Yeah. Uh, yeah, we all jump in already. Oh, yeah. so we, sing, we, sing. we sing for Gili, we sing for Gili, and we also sing, uh, we also sing for Baba. Yeah, quite, quite, quite a nice call, quite a nice call. Okay, yeah, thanks. so yeah, so going forward, okay, April, many people say April is a best month for stock, uh, but uh, for this year, for this year, something different because we are seeing a war, a Ukraine war, so I, I suggest we cautiously see April. Huh? And okay. and as we all know, there's a selling in May coming. 
also we do not know how this is going to impact uh, on the selling in May okay. and we have we have many many banks uh, ex dividend soon uh, Singapore Bank yeah our SDI and if you really took a look our SDI actually is a double top uh. our really? S yes can you show can you show because on my side I have technical error I cannot show chart that's why I okay. I, I just need I just okay. can explain yeah uh, SDI okay. is a double top on the on the daily chart, daily daily chart. chart is it? okay it's an M and it is bearish oh you mean you're talking about this big M is it yes it's a double top uh, okay okay what you mean by double top is that there's a reaction from here a one more yeah. reaction from here lah. yeah so okay. this is this is what I wanted to cautious everyone and also uh, because our our SDI actually uh, the heavy weight uh, is banks uh, we have three banks uh, uh, which actually uh, contrib con contribute quite uh, heavy to our SDI and those banks uh, ex dividend very soon uh, that, that's why you can see from the chart it started to show bearishness already that, that is where I wanted to cautious everyone yeah SDI to me is a double top and uh potential double top I'm making now. yeah a double top yeah it's true it looks like a nice level it looks like a nice level last time in 2019 also reacted off this level here yeah. yeah back in 2019. Mm. okay this, th this resistance is quite strong huh quite like strong I say, yeah i would say this resistance is very strong yeah so now tested two times fail huh? yeah so uh I, I just want to uh, share share my concern on this and and I hope everyone take note of this one. Okay, all right. Uh, thanks thanks for sharing. Uh, you you certainly are very up to date with the charts. <laughs> <It's> <laughs> nice. Yeah, it's, it's nice. a double top. Yeah, it's a double top. Yes, and and we can see Hang Seng actually um broke out the double top. You know, you you show Hang Seng daily chart one more time. Yeah, Hang Seng. Yeah, Hang, Seng. Index. Hang Seng index. Yeah, Hang Seng index here. Yeah, can you see? Last you, you 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 can use can i see the daily chart six months this is the daily chart or you, uh, you mean zoom in uh? you can zoom 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 no it's too too far away really. like that uh, oh yes yes okay you can see a double top as well over here Hi, over here okay, yeah. Yeah. so it, it's not really a top but uh yeah. it's kind of like a resistant yeah so so you're, really? you're expecting re the reversal up no 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 uh ju judging by today's performance ah uh, today because we don't have china market uh chi china actually uh offer today no china market so oh, yeah, yeah yeah so today we don't have china market and hang Seng itself uh because i think last week saturday there's some good news on the tech uh. today tech stock actually very bullish okay. over the yeah over one one piece of news uh, they're saying that uh the china government going to uh uh, cooperate with the US to release the audit uh, something like that for the for the uh, for the for the stock you know listed uh, in the US China stock yeah so that actually is, that is uh, quite a good news uh, for many listed uh, tech stock uh, over in uh, uh, Hang Seng yeah okay. so I can see today uh, the momentum is very good to the momentum is very good. so okay. yeah can, can see right yeah, I can see. I can see. Yeah, I mean, ah. it's a it's a nice gap, lah. It's a nice gap uh, after a uh, nice gap that happened today. Right, yeah. Nice. So I do so, see maybe testing the twenty three thousand area. Correct. Right? Correct. Testing correct. area. Yeah. Whether it breaks past this area, I think this is uh, personally, I think it's a big resistance, lah. So I'm uh, not. Uh, I I kind of want to see what happens when uh, it tests the twenty three thousand area over here. Yeah. Hang Hang Seng Index definitely is not out of the wood yet. It's not out of the wood yet. Yeah. But uh, we can see a lot of a uh, buyback. Uh. Uh, you, if you notice, uh, there are a lot of buyback. Tencent buyback, sell me buyback, blah, blah, buyback. A lot of buybacks uh, uh, in the past. So you, we can see the support is there already. It's it mm. just like uh, we, we need more confirmation. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. All right. Thanks. Thanks for sharing that, uh, Ling Lin. <laughs> right. Thank you, Justin. Yeah. Uh, really, really interesting things to look at. I think you know, we're looking at Sinook, we're looking at Hang Seng, looking at uh, uh, Comfort, looking at Genting, right? For, <laughs> for, your, yeah. for your info, Comfort Delgro is my long, long, long love. <laughs> ah, really, yeah, I, 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 I like it. Comfort Delgro a lot. <laughs> I like a lot. Yes, I like Comfort Delgro a lot. I'm, uh, I'm, right. hold, 
I'm holding yeah. it for very long already. It actually okay. passed, passed down to me from my uncle. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so you're, you're, you're holding comfort uh, long now? Uh? Very, yeah, long. Yes. Okay, yeah. okay. That's nice. Yeah. That's nice. You right. can see now the demand for uh, land transport is uh, very, very uh, high, especially mm -hmm. right. we, we open up already our airport, mm -hmm. right? We have visitor coming in already. And you can see uh, the, the Woodland checkpoint also very busy right now. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah, many people start to move around. Yeah. Be, be it visitor or our, our local, uh, domestic. Yeah. So, people are quite happy with all the announcements made by uh, our government. Yeah, so okay. this is something very good for land transport. Yeah, only thing I worry uh, is oil price. Uh. Again, I, I like SIA. I like SIA, but the, the problem for SIA is let's say oil price going to inch higher. That one definitely yeah. is another problem to, to uh, aviation. Yeah, yeah that would be a big uh, problem with aviation. Definitely. Not, not, not to say very big, uh, not to say very big, but uh, oil price definitely will give some pressure give some pressure but i i think uh sia can be a uh, very outstanding uh because among so many uh airline in the world i can see sia is one of the best yeah it oh. is the best yeah it is the best and it is definitely the preferred choice uh, preferred choice of many people yeah mm, the, the brand the brand is very strong yeah, I think the government ha has made a very good uh, choice uh, to, to, to build and uh, to, to uh, support this uh, SIA. Yeah, it will okay. definitely be very outstanding. Yes. Okay. All right. All right. Uh, thanks, Ling Lin. I think we, we, we overshot our time a bit, but I think because we are all too uh yeah, all too deep into looking at the charts and calls, which is nice. I think the audience really uh, appreciates uh, you coming on, you sharing. Uh, especially your um, you call it the mega megaphone kind of yeah, megaphone, yes. at, right. Yes. The, um, I think your charts really help uh, us get a better idea on how you how you do a little bit of your charting, right? Yes. Which is really nice, really nice. And of course, your some of the uh, really really great calls you did on um, on uh, on oil, on oil, I right? Uh, you cashing in on Gili, cashing in on a couple of I think um, S and P also, right? Um, last was it last week or the week before? I think you cashed in. Uh, yes. SMP, the SMP. DLC also. Yes. Uh, very nice. You're on a roll, right? <laughs> so keep it up. I think the investing note community will continue to uh, look for your daily calls, right? Um, I think it's it's just normal, right? You know, sometimes we get it right, sometimes we get it wrong. But most importantly, is you know to take the correct methodology. You mentioned the six. Um, what is it? The six. The, uh, the vital signs. The vital signs to keep a watch on the markets, right? Yeah. The good approach. That's that's when I want to learn Fibo from you. You must teach me. Okay, okay. One so day. For, for, for me, for me, my charting, I only use two things. Formation, formation and trend. I have been okay. teaching this and I call it a chart pairing. Yeah, okay. I, 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 learned, I learned from you, Fibo, and I wanted to learn more from you. Yeah, I'm, I'm still learning a lot of things and every day is learning. I, I don't good. see... I'm, I don't see myself as very great. I see myself as very small. And I, I would like to learn from everyone. Every, everything comes to me as a challenge. Once I resolve it, it becomes my knowledge. So yeah, I, learn from, I learn from everyone. Okay, I'm I'll share a little bit more on, on Fibonacci, right? Uh, moving on. But I think, uh, yeah, it's a, it's a good approach to take like that. Um, anything that you don't know, you just, uh, I believe in applying discretion. Right, and especially in the world of trading, right, mm -hmm. um, you can end up learning the wrong stuff, right? So, so, uh, so there's it's different from school where you know you're only learning the right stuff, right? But for for trading, you can learn the right stuff and you can also learn the wrong stuff, right? So we need to always uh, exercise discretion, uh, yes. when, when when learning lah. Okay. Yes. <laughs> all right. Okay, all right. I learned a lot you. from you also. <laughs> Thank you, thank you, Lilin. All right, so that's it for me, right? Uh, thank you uh, so much to the guests for all tuning in. Right? I hope you found this session useful. Tune in again two weeks from now, right? We'll be interviewing another guest, right? Uh, and we'll also be looking at the market, see how we're doing, right? It's, uh, we're keeping really close tabs uh, on some of the calls that we've made every single fortnight, right? And let's just hope they work out well. Otherwise, thank you once again. I will catch you. Uh, thank you, Lilin, you know, for, for uh, taking the time to share you, with us. You're most welcome. 
right? And thank you, Ethan, and investing.sockchain for hosting this. Until thank next time. You. Adios. Bye.